Hi guys, it's uh, Ray here, hope you're feeling well. So if you're watching this quick video within the J4K School uh, community, it means that you are a goalkeeping coach now. If you are really serious about your goalkeeping coaching, now look, I, I help all different types of goalkeeping coaches. Uh, maybe it's a parent and they want to dare a goalkeeping coach. It's maybe someone who voluntary coaches for their... Uh, their local club or someone that wants to earn a full-time income uh, as a goalkeeping coach so whatever level you are you've come to the right place here guys i'm going to give you three vital tips that if you follow i will promise you will put you give you the edge of your, or your competition and i don't care how long your qualification your competition has been established how big their qualifications are etc uh, by doing these three things i promise you your students will want to come to you in their absolute droves. And also, if you're really serious about your goalkeeping coaching and you want to have a positive impact on the goalkeeping community, and obviously you want to earn an income for yourself and your family, wait till the very end, because I'll actually explain something where you can go and literally uh, follow this advice. And I promise you, it will change your life as a goalkeeping coach, because 99% of goalkeeping coaches will not understand or don't understand or know what I teach in this presentation. But I'll explain it towards the end, guys, because I'm only going to give you a brief version. It's only going to be about eight or nine minutes long. So this will help you guys who obviously you know want to develop your goalkeeping. But you guys that want to take it to the next level, please wait to the very end because I'll explain something that can be potentially life-changing for yourself. Now, before I get into these three tips, guys, okay, yeah, I want to say as well, this is going to sound crazy, but um, the biggest mistake a lot of goalkeeping coaches make is that, especially when I sort of, you know, interview goalkeeping coaches, because I've helped well over, you know, well over a thousand goalkeeping coaches. Now, a lot of goalkeeping coaches join just for keepers or J4K, okay? because we make it super easy for them to, basically, we take all the headache away, we take care of technology, the websites, and we help them build a business and to be honest with you any coach who joins j4k very very quickly they become the go-to goalkeeping coach in the area it's just that our system that we put in place we've been literally fine-tuning it now for over two decades now so we're supposed to be like the mcdonald's uh, at the goalkeeping coaching world in terms of systems what that we put in place etc but literally the goalkeeping coaches that i speak to uh, and without doubt the ones that unfortunately fail and land on their faces the ones i think it's all about qualifications believe it or not and they'll come to me they'll say right i want to be the most qualified goalkeeping coach in my area and i'm going to be the best goalkeeping coach in my area now before i go into these three tips okay i just wanted to explain this because it's super super important guys if you think qualifications is the key to your success as a goalkeeping coach I promise you guys, okay, it's not. Am I saying qualifications is bad? Of course I'm not, okay, guys, okay, yeah. Again, but the most of the goalkeeping coaches who I've helped, who've been hugely successful, and they've coached thousands of goalkeepers over the past two decades now, and they've earned themselves a really, really good income. They, they earn more income than probably what most professional goal in fact i'll say that they, they do more earn more income than 98 percent of professional goalkeepers but more importantly they do it on their time uh, and for me that's the most important thing in life you should be doing everything on your time not everybody else's uh, anyway i'm gonna waffle I'm waffling on a bit here but the goalkeeping coaches who i've helped who are the most successful uh, in my eyes only got their level one or level two goalkeeping coach believe it or not because there's a lot more things that's much more important than being qualified which i'll explain more towards the end of this quick video again am i saying qualifications as bad of course i'm not guys okay so if you're someone who wants to go and coach at a professional club obviously you're going to have to go down that route okay but if you're someone who's not really interested in coaching prof a professional football club or soccer club and you want just want to have a massive impact on goalkeepers uh, in your region and obviously still earn more than a full-time income working part-time hours i promise you qualifications is not the key in fact qualifications will actually hinder your success again so when i speak to coaches and coaches say to me right and they think it's all about qualifications and it's all about being the best goalkeeping coach in their area i never see them again they literally just disappear because they got the priorities wrong because the only thing that you need to be worried about seriously is helping the goalkeepers okay the, the goalkeepers who you're going to coach or the parents of the goalkeepers who you're about to coach listen they're not really interested in your qualifications in fact i guarantee they're not interested in your qualifications they're not interested in you being the best goalkeeping coach in your region or your country all they're interested in and quite rightly so is what are you going to do for my child my child's coming to you at this level they want to get to that level and maybe they want to go and achieve their dreams and become a professional goalkeeper or gain a college scholarship in the united states that's all parents want they want you to treat their child with respect 
uh, as I say, check, 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 sorry, check, uh, treat their child with respect. Also then as well, de obviously develop them, uh, and then also give them opportunities. That's all they want. They're not interested, uh, obviously, in your qualifications or how, how great you think you are. Please remember that, guys. As a goalkeeping coach, we're here to serve others first. And when you start saying it's about qualifications or I want to be the best, that's about you. Put your ego away, guys, okay? Yeah, a massive ego. Okay, we all need a bit of an ego. Actually, we don't. We need confidence. We don't need an ego. Keep your ego away from the kids, okay? Please, okay? One for yourself, but two for your students because the only reason that you should become a goalkeeping coach is if you're going to serve your students. That's it, period, okay? So please, I'm not knocking anyone, by the way, here, guys. Please don't think I'm knocking any goalkeeping coach. I'm not. I'm giving you some tips here. Have you really listened to what I'm saying? You might have to rewind it back a few times. If you are desperate to be, as a goalkeeping coach and you want to achieve your dreams, please listen to what I'm going to say in this quick video and the tip that I get, give you at the end of this video. I promise you it will change your life because 99% of goalkeeping coaches don't understand what I'm teaching you here and what I'll, obviously more information I'll give you in a moment. Okay, anyway, the three tips. First of all, tip number one, okay, is make sure that your students... Yeah, they know that you're approachable okay so smile have fun okay yeah uh, because what happens is again they, to be a success as a goalkeeping coach i'm going to just go back a bit i'm going to digress remember it's not about be, you being the best goalkeeping coach or the most qualified guys it's not it's these three things that i'm about to explain now i promise you that was said especially if you want to go as a goalkeeping coach in your own business you definitely need these three things or you will fail full stop but even if you go and coach at an academy or a football club again you'll still need these things i'll be honest with you to to have the respect uh, from from your from your goalkeeping students so the rule number one is be approachable smile okay yeah so when your students first meet you give them a smile okay get that you know you get just too many goalkeeping coaches and you get some actually who wear sunglasses Get those sunglasses off. What are you doing wearing sunglasses? I don't care how hot it is. I've coached all over the United States where it's been over 110 degrees. I think we were in Denver, Colorado one year and it was scorching hot. Uh, it was in Florida, it was in Georgia where it was that hot. Our, 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 our football boots were all cleats were actually melting on the, on the artificial surface. I wouldn't put sunglasses on because you need that eye contact with your students. So first of all, get those stupid sunglasses off if you're a goalkeeping coach, okay? Again, when your students approach you, you've got to know, you've got to make them realise that you are uh, you are approachable. So smile, have fun. Does that mean you don't take it seriously? Of course not, okay? As a coaches, we need that fine line. We still need to take it seriously. We still need to make sure that we get that respect from our students, okay? But the first thing is you need to let your students know that you are approachable, uh, as a coach because if, if you're not and I'll be honest with you there's, uh, there's too many goalkeeping coaches now as I say the ego gets in the way and what happens is if their students if they make a mistake you know or if, if, if they're feeling underconfident or there's, there's something they're not sure about they'll never ask you because they'll be too intimidated to come and speak to you and if that's you if your student is too intimidated to come and speak to you as a goalkeeping coach shame on you okay that's not the student's fault that's your fault because you've got to you're, you're the adult okay for the most part okay so set your stall obviously yeah i say we need that fine line we need that respect we need to be serious okay but you also let them know hey listen like, have a bit of fun here okay uh smile let your students know that you're approachable because I promise you, you have a much better experience with them. They'll come to you if they need help and they'll develop a lot faster. Rule number two is make sure your students feel at ease as well. Okay, so when they're training, etc., it looks let them know from day one. Look, if you make a mistake and the, and the ball goes through your legs, listen, we're gonna laugh, okay, guys, we're gonna laugh, we'll laugh it off, okay, because listen, it happened to me as a goalkeeping coach, but listen, hey, let's have a bit of fun. But obviously, if you make a mistake, yeah, we'll have a laugh, you know, but we'll put it right, okay, because what you don't want is your students. And again, I see it time and time again with these goalkeeping coaches who think they're more of a sergeant major than a goalkeeping coach, you know, and their students make a mistake and the students freeze up. You know, and these students could only be eight, nine, ten years of age. To be honest with you, I promise you, I've had so many arguments with goalkeeping coaches. Obviously, not not when when it's gone. I've, I've waited for everyone to go, and I've basically said, "What are you doing? You know what I mean? You're a grown man. You know what I mean?" Uh, I say, so "Mostly, some it's these guys with sunglasses on as well." I say, "Listen, you're not Maverick in Top Gun. You're a goalkeeping coach. Get those stupid glasses off. You know what I mean? Stop being like a sergeant major. You know, you're, you're their mentor. You've got to have your students at ease. So again, if your students make a mistake, obviously, yet we've got a team." Teach our students not to make mistakes, but if your students are at ease with you and they make a mistake, okay, uh, what's going to happen next time it comes? They're going to go, okay, I'll have an, I'll, I'll, they'll try it again because they don't feel intimidated by yourself as a coach. Because if they feel intimidated and not at ease and they make a mistake, 
oh, they're just gonna freeze and they're never gonna develop under your guidance, guys. Okay, they're never gonna develop. But if they're at ease and they make a mistake, obviously, yeah, they're upset that they've made a mistake, but they're gonna go, you know, coach is not gonna shout at me, and they'll try again, and they'll try again, and they'll try again. And honestly, the amount of times where you know I've been a training session and the ball's gone to a student's leg, one of our students' legs, and the whole class has gone, way and I had a laugh, and the students laughed. You know what I mean? They've laughed, okay, yeah. Obviously, we, you know, because we all know as goalkeepers, and again, it's happened to me where I've dropped the ball in training, and all my students are going, way and I've gone, way you know what I mean? Back at them, guys, okay, you've got to have a bit of banter, a bit of fun, okay, as I say, yeah. am I promoting making mistakes? No, of course not, guys, you do it in the right way, and if you think that I'm promoting making mistakes, again, you've got this wrong, guys, okay, yeah. As I say, you've got to put your students at ease. If they make a mistake, listen, see the fun side of it, but hey, there's still a serious side of it. We put it together. So imagine being in an environment, not just with your coach, with your fellow goalkeeping students. And if someone makes a mistake, you'll go, whoa, we have a bit of a laugh. It doesn't, doesn't intimidate you just as a student, okay? Uh, and what's going to happen is you'll keep trying and trying and trying, and eventually you will not make that mistake, okay? So number two, please make sure you don't intimidate your students. Make sure that they feel at ease, because I promise you, if they know that they can make a mistake in, what, in your classes, then they're not going to get shouted at they'll be comfortable to try, try, try again. What's going to happen? They'll eventually not make those mistakes, guys. And last but not least as well, most important, make them feel a thousand foot tall, okay? Every time they make a save, encourage them, okay? But mention their name as well. I always make it my goal, pardon the pun, to mention one of my students' names at least three times in every session because what happens when someone mentions your name makes you feel a thousand foot tall, even as an adult, okay? Yeah, even though when I know someone's but what they're doing and they're trying to make me feel good they'll go Ray that was amazing that I go I know what you're doing but yeah, thank, thank you <laughs> appreciate that uh, what was it we all feel good even as adults when someone praises us okay uh, so I always make sure I put a name to it as well for a couple of reasons first most important one it makes the goalkeeper important so if a keeper makes a save I'll go Dave that's an amazing save well done you know what I mean or if they do something fantastic or they encourage someone I'll go Sharon brilliant well done for encouraging your fellow teammates I always put a name on it guys okay but also as well sometimes one of your students, they could make an amazing save, and you could go, fantastic save, Billy, and turn round. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry if, if they make a save, and you say, that's a great save, and you turn round and walk somewhere else, they're going to turn round and go, ah, oh, no, I mean, well, I, I, the, the, the coach never meant me. But even though they're back, because obviously, you've, you've, even though that you were speaking to them, hey, great save, but you've turned around, they, they think, oh, you, he, he, me coach must have been speaking to someone else. But even though your student's back is to you, if they make a great save and you go, fantastic save, Billy, and then you walk away, even though their, back's, their back is towards you, and I've seen it a thousand times, even though my student's back's to me, and I go, amazing save, Billy, I see the shoulders just lift up. Guys, I promise you this, okay? If you make your students feel a thousand foot tall, I promise you guys, okay, you will make them bulletproof, okay? Because we all need encouragement in life, okay? And I promise you, if you do, do those three things, be approachable, okay, for your students. Make them feel at ease so they know if they make a mistake, you're not going to shout, okay? And make them feel a thousand foot tall. Set a goal, pardon the pun, to mention your students' names at least three times in each session, okay? Because remember, we're there to empower young goalkeepers, guys, okay? We're not there about us. We're not about an ego or anything like that. If that's you, get out of goalkeeping coaching right now, seriously. Because honestly, guys, yeah, if I see you, I'll tell you straight, honestly, you won't like it, okay? For me, we should be there to serve our goalkeeping students. That's it full stop it's not about us it's about our students okay but if you put those three things in place i promise you okay i promise you you'll have your students coming to you in droves why because other goalkeeping coaches they're unapproachable they, they're not friendly if the keeper makes a mistake they're, they're yelling at their students there's no encouragement okay it's all about them so i promise you if you don't do if you don't if you just do those three things i don't care if you're a level one and you're competing with a goalkeeping coach who's been going for 10 years and they're established and they're a level four, you will blow them out the water. And I'm not saying in a nasty way, but you will blow them out the water literally within a few months. How do I know that? I've done it time and time and time again with J4K coaches who've gone into an area completely like brand new to the game, having to compete against goalkeeping coaches who are really well established. I've gone, listen, don't worry about them because these are the ones, these are the coaches who wear the sunglasses, they're arrogant towards the students, they've got a big ego. Listen, just do these three things, follow the J4K system, I promise you, and boom, I've, I've, I've had coaches now who've been with me in J4K for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Seriously, guys, and they follow those three same principles. Hope that helps, guys. Okay, yeah. So, listen, if you're someone who's really serious about your goalkeeping coaching, listen, pop the link, click the link below. 
you go through to like a presentation, it's about 45 minutes long, okay? And I will explain, I'm sorry to be the bearer of the bad news here, why most goalkeeping coaches will sadly, will never earn the income that they want. And I promise you, I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news here, you're probably going to be one of the goalkeeping coaches that will never earn the income that you desire as a goalkeeping coach. And look, it's not because, it's, it's not because you're not good enough, okay? Not, I promise you, it's not because you are not good enough. Other goalkeeping coaches will get the opportunity, even though that you are 20 times better than them. But again, please click the link below. Uh, it's about 45 minutes, and I promise you, if you're so, a goalkeeping coach who wants to make, you know, a, you know, make a career out of goalkeeping, I promise you that 45 minute um, like presentation that I've done will change your life as a goalkeeping coach. I promise you, it will waking you up. 99% of goalkeeper coaches don't understand it. Again, I can't go into too much detail here because I've gone I've gone far too long already with this video. But I promise you, if you followed everything in that in that video uh, below, uh, so the presentation, I promise you, it will give you the edge on 99% of your competition because they don't know. They've no idea what it's all about. It's took me over 20 years to master what I put in that presentation. This is just a quick one, just to whet your appetite. So I hope that helps, guys. Okay, yeah, all the best. And again, listen, if you're a goalkeeper coach and you need help and advice, just please reach out to me uh, and I'll, I'll help you as best I can. All the best. Take care.